Hey guys, I am back from my CB500 cross-country trip and it's kind of funny because I've taken this bike cross-country as well. I've taken this one for much longer than I've taken the CB500. Since I've ridden these bikes cross-country, I wanted to tell you which one I think is better as a cross-country tourer and I want to talk to you about what are some of the differences and what are the cons and pros of each bike. The specs on this bike, this one's a 650, the CB is a 500. This one weighs about 490 pounds and the CB weighs about 430 pounds. On the highway, the V-Strom is a lot better. There's no denying it that this is a bigger bike. When you sit on it, it feels much heavier, feels much more substantial. There is a lot of grade fit and finish of this bike, but on the road, it just feels so much better than the CB500. The CB500 gets blown around a lot on the highway. And when you're riding past like a semi or a semi like passes you, it blows you around quite a bit. This one's a lot better for that. So if you do a lot of highway riding, this is the bike to get. This bike feels great at 70 to 80 miles per hour on the highway. The CB feels much better at 65 to 70. So it's a little bit of a decrease, but it makes sense since the CB is a 500 and this one's a 650. Comfort. This is a much more comfortable bike just because it's got a much wider seat than the CB500 and there's a lot more wind protection. Even without the aftermarket windscreen, the wind protection is better on this one because the, all the plastics kind of come up a little bit more and protect the rider a lot more. That adds a lot to the comfort of this bike. <clears throat> a V-Strom seat is a little bit wider up here and it makes it a little bit more comfortable on the highway. I have my Airhawk which makes it easy to put stuff to sit down and have different positions. Miles per gallon. Efficiency is one of the pros that the CB500X. The CB500X gets about 60 miles to the gallon. This one gets about 50 miles to the gallon. It's like a 10 mile per gallon difference. Of course, it has a lot to do of how you ride it. If you're an aggressive rider, you're gonna get much worse gas mileage. <clears throat> but I find that the CB500 is much better in fuel efficiency than this bike. This one is efficient. For a V-Twin, V-Twins aren't known to be that fuel efficient, but the CB500 with its inline two is extremely efficient. And the cool thing is it's got an onboard computer that calculates it for you. v weighs 490 pounds. The CB weighs 430 pounds. Not a big difference, but when you move the CB500 in the garage, you can tell right away how easy it is to move the CB. This one is a much bigger bike. It's a lot bulkier. You wouldn't think that that difference in weight would matter, but it does matter. A lighter bike is always much better. And moving around the CB500, if it, a bike has ever broken down on the highway or on the road on you and you have to push it, Having a very lightweight bike makes a big difference. I've had bikes break down on me and I've had to push like 1300 cc bikes and they are heavy. They're extremely heavy and it's quite a bit big workout. And if there's any uphill, forget about it. You're gonna be struggling. Now the back roads, I'm actually very comfortable with this bike because this is my own bike, but the CB500 is a much better back road bike if your speed is down low, if your speed is relatively under like 60 miles per hour. The CB500 does much better than this because this one has a little bit more power and it likes a little bit more higher speed sweepers. The CB500 loves like very tight turns and it's easy to flick around because it also has got less weight. I find that on the back roads, I have to shift the CB500 much more than this one. The good thing about this one is the V-Twin engine. It's really a very streetable engine and you can ride it and kind of be lazy about shifting and it'll still pull you through the corners and you do have some oomph to your, your throttle. So when you hit the throttle, this bike does give you a good like power. The CB500 does not give you that and you constantly have to keep the revs higher on the CB500. So you have to be a better rider on the CB500 to ride it fast but it is an easier bike to ride. Both of these bikes are very easy to ride, but the CB500 has an edge on back roads. Engine. 
A lot of people love the V-Twin. I'm actually a fan of the inline twos because of their efficiency, but you can't deny how good these engines are. And Suzuki did a great job on this V-Twin. It's, you know, you, I like to quote bulletproof because there's no such thing as bulletproof, but this bike is extremely reliable. The engine is the best part of the bike. And it's an um, engine that's been on the SV650. It's tried and true. It's a very reliable engine. Just to tell you how reliable it is, you need to get these valves adjusted every six to 8,000 miles. It never needs adjustment. These V-Stroms and SV650s, you can just keep the engine running. Unless you hear some crazy noises, you don't need to adjust valves. I've seen guys who have taken their bikes into the shop to get their valves adjusted and they're still within spec in 100,000 miles. So it's something that shows you the great engine of the SV650 and VSRAM is their durability. The CB500 is an inline two, it's much more fuel efficient, it's a much more modern engine. They're easy to make, but you have to work them harder than these. These make really great power for street riding and just riding around town. They're very fun to ride because of the way they make power. This is my second V-Twin. I'm not a big fan of V-Twins, but riding a V-Twin makes me think that for the street, that's all you pretty much need. And they're fun. They sound great. The CB500 sounds like crap. The inline twos do not sound good at all. I've had quite a few inline twos. It's just the way it is. Even if you put an exhaust on it, it's not going to sound great. Suspension. Suspension on both of these bikes is pretty similar. It's like a budget suspension that you see on all of these entry-level bikes. The, this one's got an advantage. It's got a knob to adjust the rebound, and that's about it. That's the only major advantage that the V-SRAM has. There's just not a lot of technology in these bikes, in this uh, price point. The CB500s forks and everything is pretty much the same and they pretty much react the same on the road there's not much difference at all they're just very budget oriented suspension you could get race tech suspension and springs and forks and emulators they'll make it a little bit better but i don't see the point it does everything i want it with the stock conventional suspension that i don't need anything else the range the range of both of these bikes is pretty good you can go between 220 to 250 miles per tank on these. The gallon on this is 5.8, I believe, and the CB500 is 4.5. It's quite a big difference, but the range is about the same because the CB500 is so much more fuel efficient that you can get 250 miles per tank on both of these bikes. Horsepower. Generally, these bikes aren't really known for horsepower because they're not meant for going fast. They're just very good all-around bikes. The V-SRAM makes 66 horsepower and it's a 650. The CB500 makes 49 at 8500. When you consider the motor as a 500cc, you're not going to get a lot of power. And the great thing about these parallel twin motors is that they get incredibly good, efficient, mileage. I, am, I was averaging 55 to 60 on this. You don't need a lot of horsepower, especially in adventure tours. And adventure tours are getting kind of complex and very big with the Africa Twins and the KTMs and the BMWs. And there's really not much point because you don't need so much horsepower for riding dirt and for adventure touring. As an adventure bike, this is all you need. 66 is even quite a bit of power. And in a way, I would prefer it to be a little bit less power on the V-Strom and more fuel efficiency. The CB500 with its 49 horsepower is all you need. The only time it feels like it struggles is on the highway. But remember, even this bike is not a highway bike. And the CB500 is certainly not a highway bike. Looks. Now the looks of these bikes are, are very different. The V-Strom, I've told you guys before, I am not a fan of the way it looks. It's very bland looking. It's not like a KLR650 that is ugly, but it's a very redeeming ugliness that it looks cool. This one does not look cool. It doesn't stand out. 
The CB500, I do like the looks. It's much more modern, it looks great. So when it comes to picking a bike based on looks alone, I would pick the CB500 and not the V-Strom. Because the V-Strom has got something really strange. Like even though it's got like plastics here, there's not a lot underneath. They could have definitely made it a little bit slimmer, made it a little bit more aggressive. KTM makes very cool, stylish bikes. I kind of wish that Suzuki changed the look to be more adventure-like. It's not an ugly bike, it's just a very bland bike. So the CB500 definitely looks much better. Passenger and comfort. Now I have taken this one cross country and I did pick up a passenger in Utah and rode with her to DC. This is not a very good passenger bike, but the CB500 is not a better passenger bike at all. It's just the way it is, but it's got a very wide back seat on it. So the seat does help both the passenger and the driver. The CB500 is not as good. The seat is much narrower. It's a very small bike, feels much smaller, very narrow. So this one's a much better passenger bike if you have a passenger. Top speed. I have ridden this one for like two hours in the desert at top speed and it was like 110 miles per hour. Of course, I was like filled with luggage and all of that. So the speed was a little bit lower. The CB500 though, the top speed, the actual top speed on the GPS is not 125 as Honda claims. It is 94 miles an hour and it'll go 100 if it's slightly downhill. So top speed on these bikes is not what manufacturers claim. This one, it's like 110, maybe 115. The CB500, 95 maybe, but don't read, don't believe what you hear on online like a lot of people like to think that their bikes go really really fast when i had an r1 people would claim it would go 250 miles an hour the speedometers are always way off you can't go by the speedometers but this one's got the higher top speed off the market on these bikes is there's a lot of off the market on this one has been on the market for quite some time so you can get parts everywhere for it but the cb500 the good thing about the cb500 the aftermarket is more geared towards the Africa twin market, so you can get like the rally raid kits and the 19 inch front wheels, better suspension. They're making a lot more stuff for it because people are realizing that CB500 is a market that people are getting into for having a smaller baby Africa twin. This one, it doesn't seem like a lot of people are into the V-Strums anymore because there's quite a bit of bikes on the adventure market. Durability and reliability. Durability on this bike is phenomenal. Like you can see examples of Vstrom 650s with 200,000 miles and still on stock whatever. The only thing is that they wear out is the chain and like all the rubber hoses and stuff like that. That's pretty normal. The CB500, it, we are yet to see how reliable it is, but it is a Honda. So Hondas generally have a very good track record. The, um, on the ride cross country, my CB sprung a leak. Seems like the oil is coming from right here. And it was very difficult to start. A little bit hard to start. I think it was to start, but what is going on here? I'm not getting on the right foot with the CB500, so I don't know how reliability is going to be in the future, but I'm pretty sure it's go I just had like a little bit of a problem and it's not the norm. Commuting. I think as a commuter, I think I would pick the CB500 over the V-Strom because it's a little bit narrower and having a narrower bike is great for going in between cars if you need to do that. This one's a very wide bike. There's much wider bikes, but this one is very, very wide. It's a great commuter. I think if your commute is a little bit longer and on the highway, this makes a better commuter. But here in the DC metro area where a lot of people just work in DC and commute 10, 15 miles in, the CB500 would make a better commuter than this one. Some of the things I really hate about the CB500 is the gas cap. The fuel tank really annoys me. I hate the fact that I have to take my key out, put it in, 
and then having to pop this out and then putting it somewhere here and then filling up and then going back in. The VSRAM, you just put the key in, twist it, and it's on the hinge. So you just pull it back and you can fill it. That's a really weird design flaw by Honda. They could have made that a much better system than what they have. I don't understand why they didn't spend just a few dollars more getting that, because every single bike on the market has this sort of system, and people expect that. Also, on the CB500, one of the things I hate is that they reverse the turn signals with the horn. So constantly, I am pushing the turn signals instead of honking or vice versa. I find that all of these Japanese bikes are pretty standard. I don't see the point of Honda changing these things. Um, it doesn't make it easier, it makes it harder. What I hate about the VSRAM is that it's ugly. It's a very ugly bike. It's not ugly, I think it's bland. It's not interesting to look at. Nobody really cares about VSRAMs. But that's the reason like they're cheap in the aftermarket is because people are not into these bikes. But I wish that Suzuki styled it a little bit better. Buying used in the used market. V-Stroms around this area will go for $2,500 to $3,000. And the CB500 will go from $3,500 to $4,500. So if you want to save $1,000, the V-Strom is the bike to get. And one of the reasons I got it is because I got it very cheap. And with the money that I saved, I had money to go ride around. So in the end, I think the V-Strom is a better bike just because it's got a very good V-twin engine. The CB500 costs more, this one is cheaper. And for me, the, that's the most important part, that if the CB500 was cheaper, I probably would be more into the CB500. And I do like the CB. It's just the VSRAM, you can get them for like $2,500 and probably even less with the high, high mileage. So if you buy a high mileage one with like 60,000 miles for $2,000, it's still gonna last you a very long time. And it's just a fantastic bike. You can keep it for a really long time. It's got fuel injection. It starts every time. It's got a 19 inch front wheel, so you can do some gravel roads, take it across the continent. But for me, having a very inexpensive bike that doesn't cost a lot to maintain, and I did have bikes that require quite a bit of maintenance, the VSRAM is not that. It actually makes you a lazy maintenance person because you never have to adjust anything other than the chain and change the oil. Nothing ever seems to break on it. It's just been a really good bike. The CB500, like I said, if it was cheaper, I would be more into it as a shorter commuter bike or making it into an Africa twin. But this one does the trick. It's cheaper. It gets a little bit less gas mileage than the CB. There's less technology on it. But the amount of technology in a CB is not much greater than this. So you kind of, at the end, you just have to pick the bike that you kind of like the most. And I think a lot of people would probably pick the CB because it looks much cooler than this. But I still would go with the old metal here. You know, of course, I've set up my own bike for adventure and touring. So it is a little bit biased. But most of the time I try not to be biased in these reviews because I want people to buy a bike that suits them. I also don't like people who buy bikes and they get so emotionally attached to bikes that if you criticize something on the VSRAM, they get very angry and they insult you as if like I'm insulting their mothers or their children. But to me, when I say that this bike is ugly, I do mean it, it is a very ugly, bland bike. I do like it and it's one of my favorite bikes, except it's just not a very interesting bike to look at. If you're like a professional reviewer, you almost feel obligated to give it and sugarcoat an opinion because you don't want to piss off the manufacturer. I don't feel that way because I don't have anybody paying me to do these little reviews. I just kind of do what I want. And I think that's the reason I enjoy YouTube reviews. They're a whole lot more honest than the opinions that you would get from journalists, proper journalists, who generally sugarcoat things to appease manufacturers. I don't feel that way. I don't feel like I have to sugarcoat my opinion on the VSRAM. 